கொடுத்துட்டு தலைப்பில் உரையாற்றி பண்ணாரு அன்பு அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் ஐ பர்சனலி தேங்க் மிஸ்டர் மோகன் சீனியர் அட்வொகேட் ஃபார் கிவிங் மீ ஒன் மோர் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு பி ப்ரெசன்ட் விசுவலி ப்ரெசன்ட் பிஃபோர் யூ இன்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் பிசிக்கலி ப்ரெசன்டிங் பிஃபோர் யூ ஐ திங்க் மெனி சீனியர்ஸ் அண்ட் லேண்ட் மெம்பர்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி பார் ஆல்சோ ஹியர் அண்ட் எஸ் வி ஹவ் ஆல்ரெடி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் வித் மிஸ்டர் Uh, senior the very purpose of this uh, program is only to not to educate anyone only to enlighten the uh, younger members who are the uh, future pillars of this uh, institution uh, therefore only with that endeavor uh, uh, he is working hard tirelessly and uh, i am also happy to be to to be a part of this uh, program to share my experience and uh, i still remember uh, one uh, thirukural uh, which says that nunniya nool pala katpinum mattrum unmai arive bigum even though uh, this endeavor is uh, not uh, to purpo- not to educate anyone uh, it is only, only an aid to persuade them to read and understand and apply in the course of this, uh, their practice so uh, unless we give this kind of uh, uh, pressure uh, i can't uh, call it as a pressure and this is this is uh, one way of uh, some uh, uh, persuasion so that uh, uh, all the uh, youngsters uh, could take it very seriously uh, to compete with the present uh, situation and we uh, we all have some basic knowledge about uh, the sale agreements it is not a new to anyone uh, uh, any lawyer who has at least one year or two years of practice would have come across at least uh, some kind of uh, suit or agreement and its enforceability but still there are uh, uh, new developments have come in in 2018 so uh, we will go to the impact of uh, the new act a little later but yes on today at least for few more years uh, we have to we have to follow the law which was prevailing prior to the amendment so uh, that is more uh, important so therefore instead of uh, because uh, there are there are many provisions many chapters so let us let me not uh, read the provisions or explain something because it is not uh, going to uh, meet the purpose uh, the provisions are already there my aim is only to uh, uh, to share my views uh, on the existing position and then we'll go to the present uh, amendment and its implication and how it uh, it has to be applied to the existing uh, suits then we'll go to it later uh, first we'll decide uh, we'll go to how the uh, law has uh, uh, developed all of us uh, would aware that ipc came into force in 1860 1860 uh, in 1860 Uh, there is a specific provision in the ipc uh, i think is section 405 which specifically deals with the criminal breach of trust so this only a penal provision it is not a civil remedy it is only a penal provision and uh, uh, after the ipc the english people thought uh, that uh, there should be some civil remedy for the breach of uh, trust so i uh, 405 deals with the criminal breach of trust so uh, thereafter they thought to introduce the contract act that is uh, 1872 contract act 1872 um, uh, came into force but contract act is only a substantive law it's not a procedural law it's a substantive law it uh, speaks about uh, the avenues and remedies available to the persons who suffered uh, due to defaulting party then in order to give effect to that uh, contract act the uh, british are uh, have introduced the um, um, earlier specific leave act 1877 that is nearly 5 years after the contract act the earlier specific leave act uh, that was the parent act came into force that was in force uh, for uh, several decades then after independence uh, and particularly after 15 uh, nearly 13 14 years after the constitution this uh, uh, the present act specific leave act uh, 1963 
was uh, was introduced which came into force on 13/1964 the specifically fact uh, consisting of uh, three parts and eight chapters now uh, the uh, heart of the topic today is only chapter 2 uh, sections 9 to 25 that uh, speaks about uh, specific performance suit for specific performance uh, uh suit for uh, this, uh, so, so the act came into force in 16 1963 and uh, if you read the uh, preamble of a definition clause of the provision which says that uh, this act has, uh, has been enacted with a view to enforce certain civil rights not all civil rights only certain civil rights if you read uh, the main provision uh, the section uh, definition clause itself it says that uh, the it can't be used for the purpose of enforcing penal law because there is a separate remedy separate provision available under the penal law so let us not go into that and uh, it is not a comprehensive enactment this act is not a comprehensive one so this uh, act this enactment is only for limited only for the purpose of enforcing certain limited uh, civil rights not for all rights if you see the act uh, the act speaks about uh, possession uh, take a specific performance injunction declaratory relief and not uh, covering all the reliefs uh, uh, civil, civil remedies so uh, uh, it is not a it's not a uh, the exhaustive code taking note of all the uh, situations uh, mainly this specific performance is based on uh, equity based because uh, it was derived from common law principle so courts of equity in england mm-hmm. Uh, as i uh, had introduced this uh, provision this en- enactment uh, during their regime so uh, basically this is uh, mainly depending upon um, uh, equity based so suit for uh, specific performance uh, is based on four uh, uh, main uh, uh, principles the first and foremost would be ubi jus ubi jus ibi remedium there is no wrong without a remedy if there is a wrong definitely there should be a remedy that is the first principle second principle he who sue he who seeks equity must uh, do equity no one can take advantage of uh, the uh, advantage of their fault or no one can take uh, 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 undue advantage over other side so both should uh, come with clean hands and uh, more than law they should do equity the third principle he who seeks equity must come with clean hands if anyone comes with clean unclean hands then he should be non suited <clears throat> that is why the act itself clearly says about some personal power personal power is also there then last one delay defeats equity equity aids equity aids the uh, vigilant and not the indolent so these are the basic foundational uh, principles uh, underlying the concept of uh, the specific performance what is specific performance specific performance is nothing but enforcement of an obligation enforcement of an obligation under the contract agreement is a contract there is no difficulty at all any agreement is a contract so specific performance is nothing but enforcement of an obligation under the contract uh, uh, that 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 enforcement uh, through a judicial process that is why suit for specific performance have been filed then what are all the basic ingredients for uh, uh, agreement what are all the basic ingredients for a contract it is covered under mainly four provisions according to me one competency of the parties so for any contract there must be four elements one competency of the parties competency of the parties uh, uh, covered under or covered under section 11 and 12 of the contract act to consensus addendum the consensus addendum there must be consent between both the parties that is covered under sections 13 to 18 of the contract act third one consideration and object there must be a consideration and the, the that consideration should be for a specific object then fourth one certainty certainty is is defined under section 29 of the contract act so these are all the basic elements for every Uh, a contract now let us go into the uh, the concept of specific performance this uh, con- uh, if you read uh, contract act contract act specifically deals about uh, deals with uh, 
uh, damages so if any breach of contract then the, the, the party non defaulting party is entitled to get damages from the party at fault so that was the uh, that, that is very much available under the contract act but uh, this remedy is not uh, was not sufficient to meet the requirement therefore the, uh, the act was introduced so specifically the act was introduced if you read the provisions even after the introduction of specific fact it specifically says that uh, specific performance there are two underlying principles one uh, specific performance could not be could not be claimed when uh, damages are uh, damages are adequate so specific performance cannot be claimed when damages are adequate two the 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 extent of damages caused by the breach could not be ascertained so two aspects one first one first one the, uh, the 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 damages is not an adequate remedy then second the uh, damages could not be ascertained only in these two circumstances the, uh, we can enforce the uh, specific performance in effect uh, if you see uh, the uh, damages is a rule grant of enforcement of specific performance uh, Uh, is, is an is an exception so this was the original position now this has been completely reversed in 2018 enactment so all right now for filing uh, uh, all right when uh, for filing suit for specific performance uh, we have to take note of a uh, few basic uh, requirements what are they i will said uh, one after another i will say one after another first uh, there must be a valid contract there must be a valid contract between the parties one two the plaintiff must be always ready and willing to perform this part of the contract two number two readiness and willingness on the part of the plaintiff throughout number three uh, manner and extent of performance of the contract by the plaintiff manner and extent of uh, performance of the contract by the plaintiff should be set out fourth defendant should have committed breach of trust breach of contract should have committed breach of contract fifth one whether the equitable relief whether the whether the equitable it whether it is equitable to grant relief or it causes any hardship to the defendant then limitation so these are all the five basic ingredients we have to take note of for the purpose of uh, ascertaining uh, for for the purpose of filing the suit so we should always keep in mind these basic principles before filing a suit for specific performance all right now a client has approached you to for, for filing a suit for specific performance uh, we have to draft a, a plaint if you uh, read order 6 rule 3 uh, cpc along with form 47 of appendix a uh, available in the code itself uh, you could see that uh, uh, there is a there, there is a special kind of pleadings uh, which we have to uh, meet so uh, normally we used to say that uh, plaintiff is ready and willing to perform his part of the contract Uh, that uh, mere way government is not enough if you read form 47 of appendix uh, a uh, which clearly says that pleadings in a plaint uh, should be in this format just i will read uh, what is there in form 47 form uh, 47 of appendix a under order 6 rule 3 says that plaintiff has been and still is ready and willing specifically to perform the agreement on this part of which the defendant had had notice as had a notice the plaintiff has been and still ready and willing specifically to perform the agreement on this part of which the defendant has had a notice so th- this is the exact uh, averments uh, which is available in form 47 but uh, i have seen a number of cases uh, 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 we, uh, we are not uh, in a, the plain the plain plaints have not been drafted to meet this requirement of uh, 
meet requirement requirement of this uh, uh, weddings uh, very recently supreme court has uh, said that uh, if the plaint is not in compliance with the form 47 uh, then plaint of such nature uh, uh, has to be uh, uh, disbelieved or the plaintiff should be non suited the very famous judgment of the supreme court is uh, to, uh, reported in 2015 Uh, 6 CTC 2015 6 CTC 545. I have given. I have already circulated uh, my notes, eh, but however, I will quote the, uh, only very important judgment so that you can also follow up the matter. Uh, 2015 6 CTC uh, 545. Patma Kumari case. In in the said judgment, Supreme Court had said that the plain in the plain uh, therein uh, that. Uh, that kind of pleadings uh, is not enough for the purpose of granting relief there are number of judgments also to that effect and i have given all the uh, judgments uh, 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 in my notes uh, circulated but uh, a contrary view has also been uh, is there uh, and all uh, the judgments of the supreme court uh, which came into effect uh, which came into effect uh, Uh, uh nearly 50 30 years ago i will uh, give a few decisions the first and foremost ar 1952 supreme court 47 ar 1952 supreme court 47 1977 1977 2 ecc 1977 2 ecc 174 1980 1981 ecc 52 1981 scc 52 the last one by honorable justice uh, uh, gusnayer in all these judgments supreme court said that uh, pleadings uh, should not be construed like uh, statutes uh, and pleadings uh, uh, pleadings is an art uh, it depends upon various factors namely the counsel's ability knowledge in law knowledge in english and his experience in the field of law so we can't expect all the pleadings in the same format but however mm. we can't take shelter under uh, this uh, judgments uh, always so we should always keep in mind that the pleading should meet the requirement of law uh, as uh, mentioned in form 47 uh, there are, there are no such specific pleading form format for pleadings in respect of partition suit or injunction suit or declaration suit but whereas in a suit for specific performance uh, cp itself uh, mandates that uh, the pleading should be in a particular form therefore you please uh, keep it in mind that uh, pleading should be uh, uh, in line with the format prescribed and uh, the earliest judgment uh, three judges bench of the judgment of supreme court in ar 1999 ar 1999 supreme court uh, 3029 3029 uh, and 2000 uh, 2005 Uh, 2005 6 SCC 243 2000 SCC 243 in all these uh, judgments supreme court said uh, uh, while uh, while uh, taking note of the pleadings uh, we have to read the entire plaint as a whole and we have to appreciate whether the pleadings uh, are in line with uh, uh, the law laid down and uh, we should uh, always apply that uh, uh, um, pith and substance not letter and spirit theory pith and substance means we have to apply the uh, we have to consider the entire pleadings uh, together uh, for the purpose of ascertaining whether it is uh, in compliance with the uh, uh, law uh, the requirement of law so th- there may be some mistakes but on the score one, one can't be non suited so that is the very purpose and uh, object of uh, uh, these uh, uh, provisions then we will go to the next one the uh, now you would have, you would have seen that in 2012 an important amendment has been brought in under uh, the registration act uh, by which uh, the uh, state legislature has introduced an am- amendment uh, saying that all the agreements on or after 
one twelve two thousand twelve uh, must be registered. Uh, uh, there are two important aspects. One, uh, there was an amendment to section seventeen, uh, section seventeen of the Registration Act. Uh, section seventeen of the Registration Act was amended on twenty four nine twenty four nine two thousand one. Uh, 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 by which, uh, yeah, if, 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 an, if an agreement was uh, executed and the possession was handed over, then uh, the, that agreement, that agreement must be compulsorily registered under Section Seventeen One. Uh, for Seventeen One was amended on twenty four nine two thousand one. So when wherever the possession was handed over under the agreement, that agreement must be compulsorily registered. For the purpose of, for the purpose of enforcing it under Section 53, uh, Capital A of the uh, TP Act, that is for part performance, uh, only for a limited purpose. That uh, amendment was brought in. Uh, suppose if a possession was handed over, possession was handed over under the agreement. That agreement uh, holder uh, uh, person in uh, agreement holder was put in possession. If he wants to retain the possession, if he wants to protect his possession, he has to. Uh, he can file a suit, provided the agreement should have been registered. If not, he cannot protect his possession under Section 53, Capital A of the Transfer of Property Act. Whereas, in respect of uh, specific performance concern, even though amendment was brought in under Section 49, that uh, amendment. Uh, uh, while while amending uh, section uh, while amending uh, the section 19, so section 17, the legislature have uh, miserably failed to amend the proviso to section 49. If you read section uh, 49 of the Registration Act, which says that proviso is very clear, suit for specific performance on the basis of an unjust agreement is um, well maintainable. Therefore. The, the amendment which came into effect uh, uh, on 1 12 2012, uh, which says that all the agreements should be compulsorily registered under as per section 17, uh, uh, as, uh, has become OTS because that, uh, uh, that uh, section 17, uh, has, that amendment to section 17 has not been correspondingly carried out in section 49. In effect, yes, on today, suit for specific performance on the basis of an unregistered agreement. Suit for specific performance on the basis of unregistered agreement is maintainable in law. There are nearly 20 judgments, yes, on today. I will give only a few judgments now, and the rest of the judgments you can take note of uh, from my notes circulated. The judgment of Supreme Court in 2018, 7 SEC, 2018, 7 SEC. 639, 639, 2018, 6 CTC, 2018, 6 CTC, 2019, 6 CTC, 580, 580. In the same book, 2019, 6 CTC, another judgment, 823, 823. 2 MWN 163. There are other judgments, but I have given uh, all the main judgments. And uh, next one we have to uh, see is the Limitation Act. Uh, in a suit for specific performance, uh, uh, the law of limitation uh, is specifically uh, prescribed under Article 54. Article 54 of the Limitation Act uh, contains uh, two limbs. The first limb of the act says when the date is uh, fixed, then three years from the date fixed. Suppose the agreement itself says that the uh, uh, agreement should be uh, completed on or before a particular date, then 
suit has to be filed within three years from the date uh, fixed. Second limb says, if no specific date is fixed, then the plaintiff has to file a suit within three years from the date on which he came to know about the express denial or denial of the contract. Suppose uh, if the, any specific date is fixed under the agreement, then three years from that date, no date has been fixed, then the plaintiff has to uh, specifically mention the date on which he came to know about the uh, uh, denial on the part of the uh, uh, defendant. In both, in both the limbs, uh, uh, the, we, we, if we, if we read the provision very carefully, uh, Article 54 clearly says that in both the limbs, uh, there must be a definite date. If date is fixed, then that date has to be counted for the purpose of three years. If no date is fixed, then three years from the date on which the defendant has expressly refused or denied to perform his part of the contract. So this is the basic uh, uh, for, for foundation. And uh, there are uh, three uh, few leading decisions of the Supreme Court on the ground of, on, on, on the aspect of uh, limitation. The 2009, 2009, 5 SEC, 2009, 5 SEC, uh, 462, 462, 2005, 12 SEC, 2005, 12 SEC, 764, 764. In fact, I, I want to elaborate a, a little more about uh, Article 54. Uh, the earlier view was that uh, uh, if a suit has been filed within a period of three years from the uh, date fixed or date of refusal, then uh, the suit uh, is well maintainable. Uh, if you read uh, Judgment of Supreme Court in AR 1965, Supreme Court 1405, AR 1965, Supreme Court 1405, the said judgment has been quoted very recently in 2019, 2019, 8 SEC, 2019, 8 SEC 62. The Supreme Court said, uh, as far as India is concerned, we have a special enactment, namely Limitation Act. Therefore, a suit is filed within, a period, within, a, within, within the period is prescribed, then the suit is uh, well maintainable. But uh, if you read uh, some, of, some of the judgments uh, which says that if the suit has been filed after a lapse of some years, uh, that is, uh, even though it, may, it would have been filed within a period of three years, uh, but not immediately after the date fixed under the agreement, then uh, uh, if a suit was filed at the verge of three years uh, or a suit was filed after one and a half years or two years, uh, many suits were dismissed on the ground that the pl plaintiff has not, uh, uh, has not approached the court at the earliest point of time. Uh, in fact, uh, the law has been developed by the Supreme Court in a number of cases which says that plaintiff should prove his readiness and willingness from the date of the agreement till the date of the uh, degree. Therefore, if any delay on his part, uh, then he should be non-suited. That is the uh, basic foundational uh, principle uh, underlying the super specific performance. But uh, if you number of judgments have come, all the judgments say that the plaintiff uh, should prove his readiness uh, from the date of agreement till the date of agreement. If there was inordinate delay, if he kept quiet for one year, two years, or uh, even two and a half years, or two years, ten months, uh, and filed a suit at the way, uh, fake end of the limitation, then he can't be, he will, he will not be granted main relief. So that was uh, the view taken consistently by the Supreme Court saying that it is an equitable relief, and he who seeks equity must approach the court with the clean hands at the earliest point of time. So that was the underlying principles. But recently in 2019, 8SC 62 Supreme Court has reiterated the original principle of 1965 and held that the suit was uh, suit filed uh, at the end of uh, the limitation is uh, uh, maintainable and relief can be granted. Suit is maintainable, there is no difficulty. But whether relief could be granted, that is the, uh, uh, that is, that, that is, that is the very main aspect which we have to see. And, uh, uh, there are uh, many judgments which says, except uh, these two judgments, there are other judgments which says that if the person has approached the, the court uh, 
after one year and two years or end of three years then he can he will not be granted the main relief uh, 2018 11 scc 762 2018 11 scc 762 one year and seven months uh, in approaching the court he was non suited 2017 4 CTC 2017 4 CTC 99 and uh, in, in fact uh, in Supreme Court in 2000 AR 2001 Supreme Court 2920 AR 2001 Supreme Court 2920 Supreme Court has gone to the extent of saying that even assuming that no time limit has been fixed one can't keep quite endlessly. and the he should approach the court within a reasonable uh, period of time they uh, they said the reasonable period of time means uh, the court has to take note of all the attending circumstances for the purpose of arriving at a conclusion whether the plaintiff has approached the court within a reasonable point of time so i have given all uh, the important leading decisions on the uh, point of uh, limitation you please uh, take note of it when uh, uh, the case uh, comes up uh, Uh, clients comes with the relief of uh, with a, with a, with a uh, request for uh, filing a suit for specific performance the next aspect we have to take into consideration is the time whether time is an essence of the contract uh, you you take it uh, that uh, time is not an uh, essence of the contract in respect of immovable property is concerned in respect of immovable property is concerned time is not an essence of the contract if it is uh, if it is relating to commercial contract time is always an essence of the contract i will give an example if uh, i have entered into an agreement to purchase a property landed property then time is not an essence essence of the contract whereas if i have entered into a commercial contract namely for load road laying work or development of building uh, or uh, 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 some uh, some in construction of some building within a period of time or some commercial nature any contract which are commercial in nature has to be complied with within the time specified so in in those cases time is an essence of the contract but time is not an essence of the contract in respect of an immovable property is concerned this position was well settled by the honorable supreme court in the constitution bench of supreme court in ar 1993 AR 1993 Supreme Court 1742 AR 1993 Supreme Court 1742 it is a constitutional bench judgment which says that time is not an essence of the contract in respect of immovable property is concerned but the supreme court has as uh, as uh, uh, said in the judgment that uh, uh, when uh, court has to ascertain the three aspects before uh, before uh, coming to a conclusion whether time is an essence of the contract or not one from the express terms of the contract we have to read the agreement itself whether agreement specifically stipulates uh, the time is an essence of the contract take an example agreement was executed for the purpose of marriage of a son or daughter or agreement to sell the property to meet the educational expenses or agreement to sell the property for the purpose of meeting the medical treatment then uh, uh, if, you, if you take note of the very the very purpose of selling the property then you can easily come to a conclusion that time has been fixed as an essence of the contract even assuming that it is uh, relating to immovable property because we have to consider the the express terms recorded because uh, the, uh, the purpose of selling itself is only to meet the sheer urgency or necessity therefore that is one of the basic uh, 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 factor to be taken note of while deciding whether time is an essence of the contract two from the nature of the property as i said if it is relating to immovable property time is not an essence of the contract except the contract specifically says or if the if the nature of the property means uh, suppose if it is for commercial contract then time is always an essence of the contract third one surrounding circumstances we have to take note of the cumulative all the factors so this is the three principle supreme court has laid down in chandrani case this was in 1963 in fact this this position of law has been in force for a number of years in 
Supreme Court in 2011, 4 CTC 640, that is Sarada Mani Kandapan case, 2011, 4 CTC 640. Uh, Supreme Court uh, has, uh, has, slightly, has slightly deviated from the earlier view and uh, held that, uh, that uh, concept of time is an essence of the contract cannot be applied endlessly because the position which was prevailing in 1990s are totally different from the present scenario because in those days the prop the property price has not gone up uh, that much as uh, present today so if uh, if you if you take if you take an example uh, the property which was uh, 10 lakhs in 1990s now has uh, gone up to 10 crores so we can't apply the same analogy uh, without taking note of the present scenario that is what the, that is why the supreme court in 2011 4 ctc 640 even though the two judges in the supreme court has not overruled because they can't overrule the, the constitutional judgment of supreme court in 1993 but they have slightly deviated from uh, the said principle and held that in appropriate cases uh, the uh, the court has to take note of the uh, the exceptions which was which, which were set out in the constitutional judgment and held that time uh, uh, cannot be an essence time uh, sometimes is an essence of the contract because uh, the present scenario has been completely changed for various uh, reasons and the property pr price has gone up and uh, uh, the, there are material changes and developments have taken place therefore the same principle can't be applied as the view taken by the supreme court in fact subsequently also in 2018 18 scc 303 2018 18 SEC 303 the supreme court has also taken a similar view but uh, uh, my uh, opinion is that unless the judgment of the constitutional bench of judgment of supreme court has been overruled all the courts are bound to follow the judgment of the, uh, uh, the judgment of supreme court in 1993 because it is a constitutional bench judgment and uh, uh, that has not been overruled or reversed uh, till today therefore that uh, that position alone according to me still prevails but the court can take note of the uh, the other uh, aspects while granting uh, or refusing to grant relief there is no difficulty at all but time is an essence of the contract in respect of mool property is concerned that position has not been changed till today that position is still prevailing and it has not been disturbed even though some devi deviations have been made from the judgment that original position is still intact and uh, you can take note of one more judgment of the division bench 2018 1 ctc 701 2018 1 ctc 701 judgment of division bench of uh, madras high court is a, one of the classic judgment which we have to read uh, in a soup for uh, particularly uh, when uh, we are conducting a soup for specific purposes a very classic judgment supreme uh, division bench has taken note of various aspects uh, equity and uh, readiness and willingness and uh, uh, limitation and uh, all all these uh, aspect personal power and the conduct of the parties everything has been uh, taken note of in the division of judgment then then we will go to the next uh, very important uh, uh, aspect readiness and willingness now this uh, readiness and willingness uh, uh, some some uh, some drastic change has been introduced to this readiness and willingness the present enactment will uh, amend amended provision will go to later but prior to amendment uh, readiness and willingness is a very very necessary and uh, 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 without proving the readiness and willingness no plaintiff could succeed in a super specific performance what is readiness what is willingness the supreme court has clearly defined readiness and willingness in a classic case uh, reported in 2010 6 ctc 901 2010 6 ctc 901 supreme court has clearly uh, laid down uh, the, the guiding principles in the said judgment 2010 6 ctc 901 readiness means the financial capacity of a person source financial source readiness means a financial source of a person willingness means conduct of the plaintiff uh, to enforce the agreement these are all two uh, aspects you please uh, uh, keep it in mind whether the clear readiness and willingness has been pleaded or not way of a defense 
still law expects that it is for the plaintiff to prove his readiness and willingness even assuming that the plaintiff has not proved his readiness and willingness uh, the, even assuming that the defendant has not taken the plea of readiness and willingness that will not uh, uh, wipe out the uh, the the statutory obligation on the uh, which uh, calls upon the plaintiff to prove readiness and willingness readiness and willingness uh, has to be necessarily proved irrespective of the fact whether the defendant has raised it or not so that was the uh, principle laid down by the supreme court in 2010 6th ctc 901 equivalent to 2011 1 scc 2011 1 scc 429 jp builders so plaintiff has, has, has to necessarily plead and prove uh, so if you read section 16 of the pre amended provision which says that plaintiff should necessarily plead and prove so there must be a pleading the pleading must be in compliance with uh, form 47 which we have already dealt with so in such a way pleading should be drafted if it is not there then naturally plaintiff has to meet the natural fate another important decision of supreme court is 2010 10 scc 502 512 512 2010 10 scc 512 then 2017 7 2017 scc 2017 12 SEC 810. Supreme Court said uh, readiness and willingness is a sine qua non, and it cannot be inferred or presumed. Readiness and willingness cannot be inferred or presumed, and it it must be it must be clearly pleaded and proved. Then, uh, regarding this uh, financial capacity is concerned, uh, division bench of the Madras High Court. Uh, yeah, reported in 2017 7 mlj 2017 7 mlj uh, 769 769 uh, held that uh, one need not carry cash on hand to prove readiness uh, always one need not carry cash on hand if he proves his source uh, namely uh, 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 amount lying in the account uh, or some uh, uh, financial sources resources he has established uh, then that is enough that is why before filing a suit for specific performance uh, we advocates used to, to advise the party uh, to deposit the balance amount uh, to keep the balance amount in his account just uh, a month or two months before filing of the suit to show that he was having uh, ready cash uh, he was having cash in his account so uh, that uh, only for that purpose we used to advise so always only not carry cash saying that i am ready 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 always it is not necessary but he should prove that Yeah, he was ready from the beginning or he has source or he has means to pay the amount so that readiness and willingness must be compulsorily proved by the uh, plaintiff uh, i have already said in 2018 one ctc 701 division bench of madras i could you have already noted in the said judgment also so division bench has, has taken note of this aspect and held that there must be readiness and willingness on the part of the uh, uh, plaintiff besides that division bench has said that there must be a consensus a dedum between the parties so both should be, uh, the, the agreement should have been executed with free consent between the both the parties and it should be for lawful consideration so that is what the division bench has said in the said judgment and the readiness and willingness is concern as i already as i have already told you it need not be proved by letter and spirit uh, it, it has to be established by pith and substance which means uh, uh, we have to take note of the entire conduct of the plaintiff after the execution of the gun till the filing of the suit and uh, the steps taken uh, by approaching the defendant and the issuing pre suit notice depositing the balance amount at the time of filing of the suit then, and uh, when the proving his readiness by producing financial resources and uh, the uh, prompt filing of the suit uh, soon after the date fixed for performance uh, uh, performance of the agreement under the contract these are all the overall picture we have to take note of we cannot isolate a single instance for the purpose of rejecting the claim of readiness and willingness we have to take note of the entire pleadings and entire conduct of the plaintiff from the date of agreement till the filing of the suit so uh, that is what the supreme court has held in ir 2005 supreme court 3563 2005 supreme court 3563 then 2014 
6 CTC 88, 2014, 6 CTC 88, Supreme Court, equivalent to 2015, 1 SCC, 597, 2015, 1 SCC, 597. In this judgment, Honorable Justice Iqbal has held that once the trial court has exercised its discretion in favor of granting or refusing to grant, then normally the appellate court should not interfere with is the view taken by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has said that um, uh, uh, suppose the plaintiff has proved his case and the court has exercised its discretion, the, the exercise of discretion in favor of the plaintiff uh, for granting the relief shall not be disturbed unless the finding given by the court is perverse or against law or contrary to the judicial principles, then only the court can reject the relief. Otherwise, court should always grant relief in favor of the plaintiff. That is reported in 2000, um, 2014, 6 CTC. 88 equal to 2015 1 SEC 597 and uh, in number of cases uh, you would have seen even for even at the time of filing the suit uh, one, need not, one need not deposit the balance amount uh, at the time of filing the suit itself if you read uh, explanation uh, to section 16 C uh, explanation to section 16 C uh, which says that Court need not deposit. Court need not deposit the the party need not deposit the balance amount at the time of filing the suit unless the court directs. But I have seen in number of, in many districts the courts normally used to give direction to the plaintiff to deposit the balance amount. If the court directs, then you have no other option. You have to file a lodgement schedule and deposit the amount. And in the in the event of in the event of no such direction. There is no obligation on the part of the plaintiff to deposit the amount in view of the explanation to section 16c of the act. And uh, there is a direct judgment of Supreme Court reported in 2011 8SEC, 2011 8SEC 601, 2011 8SEC 601. Supreme Court has clearly said that the suit cannot be dismissed merely on the ground that the balance amount has not been deposited. Balance amount need not be deposited unless the court specifically directs the plaintiff to do so. So that is the position of law 2011 8 SCC 8 uh, You, I have already stated that uh, one need not carry case on hand. So if he proves his financial capacity, that is enough. You have already noted the judgment of the Madras Psycho 2017 7. MLJ 769, 17.7 MLJ 769. Same view was again reiterated in 2017, 4 CTC. 2017, 4 CTC 734. The division bench said readiness can be proved by many means, and it is not it is not necessary for the plaintiff to carry the cash and cash on hand. And uh, the, the Madras High Court uh, has uh, taken note of the march of law and uh, held that the recent past, uh, the view towards, uh, view in respect of specific performance has been completely changed uh, because of galloping increase of uh, price uh, rise in respect of lands uh, and uh, various other uh, infrastructure development, uh, developments uh, and uh, the uh, globalization and uh, price rise, various factors have influenced the mind of the court. Therefore, now the, the Madras High Court in 2017, 3 MWN, 2017, 3 MWN 185, 185, uh, held that the court should always take note of the, the present scenario and the new dimension uh, which, has, which has been developed in respect of suit for specific performance is concerned. So that is the present uh, position. And uh, while uh, a suit for a specific uh, performance is filed, the defendant has many defense to raise. But uh, whatever may be the position, 
in a suit as in a while filing the return statement yes i have already said uh, while dealing with the cpc always the defendant should meet the entire allegations made in the plaint uh, mere denial mere vague denial of the plaint averments is not enough the defendant has to has to meet the entire allegations uh, and averments made in the uh, plaint uh, if he is uh, if, he, if there is no dispute if he, if he is admitting then he has to specifically say that the particular averments or allegations made in the in the particular pair of the plaint are true if he disputes uh, then he has to necessarily dispute or deny the uh, 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 the allegation made in the plaint if any particular fact or any particular pleading in the plaint has not been denied specifically then it is a deemed admission as per order 8 rule 3 order 8 rule 5 cpc order 8 rule 5 cpc similarly uh, mere denial of plaint averments alone is not enough the plaint defendant has to set out his own defense in the suit so one oh, the defendant always keep in mind that he should specifically deny the plaint averments specifically second he has to take his own defense in the written statement both must be there this is what uh, the uh, order 8 rule rules 3 4 5 uh, have been uh, dealt with order 8 rule 3 4 5 two leading decisions i want to uh, place it one 2013 2013 to scc 2013 to scc 606 the next one 2017 2017 five mlj 2017 five mlj 884 this is also supreme court judgment in both the judgment supreme court has elaborately discussed about the the <coughs> the uh, the, uh, the way of uh, pleadings uh, which has to be pleaded as per order 8 rule 3 4 5 then uh, what are all the defenses available to the plaintiff in a suit for specific performance according to me <coughs> um, if you if you take uh, section 9 of the specific fact uh, under in the, in the chapter 2 in a suit for specific performance the first provision section 9 deals with all kinds of defenses available in respect of a contract in a, in, a, in respect of a contract can be raised so all all defenses which are available uh, uh, for a party uh, while facing a suit in respect of a contract is also available in a suit for specific performance even before deciding what are all the contract could, could be enforced what are the contracts could not be enforced uh, in chapter uh, as set out in chapter 2 the very first provision under section 9 which specifically says that the defendants can raise all kinds of defenses what are all the defenses can be raised i will see, i will give some uh, few illustrations but defenses are innumerable in nature uh, loan transaction we will deal with loan transaction separately we are going to refer many judgments on loan transaction to order to rule to suit the first suit would have been filed for injunction uh, uh, even though there was a cause of there was there was a cause of action available for the plaintiff to file a suit for specific performance he would have chosen to file only where bare injunction to avoid payment of court fee or some other agency then he cannot maintain the uh, suit for specific performance without the leave Uh, which would have been attained in the first suit itself while filing the suit for injunction itself the plaintiff has to attain the leave he should attain leave to file a fresh suit in a later point of time for a larger leave that is specifically specific performance if he has not attained the leave then that uh, the attained the leave then the second suit filed for specific performance is read by order 2 rule 2 then document itself is void and uh, unenforceable for many reasons suppose minor was it minor had executed an agreement it is a void document it cannot be executed or unenforceable or against public policy we you know we cannot uh, we cannot enter into agreement to corrupt a person because it is against law so that is also unenforceable then against the document against the public policy you cannot uh, uh, enter into any document uh, against a public policy namely an, an agreement for the purpose of uh, uh preparing a counterfeit currency which is an against the public policy which is an offense so that can't be uh, entertained then the re- remedies which are available under the contract acts section 11 to uh, 18 we have already uh, i have already said in the beginning itself uh, namely fraud uh, coercion uh, undue influence uh, misrepresentation 
and these are all the differences which are available uh, in the contract at itself so those differences can be raised then uh, 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 agreement is unenforceable under section 14 of the uh, specifically fact 14 says uh, if a contract of some minute details uh, or contract which requires a continuous uh, performance of duties uh, monitoring uh, uh then those contracts cannot be enforced take an example suppose a uh, contract was executed for a uh, construction of a, a building then it can be enforced no difficulty at all but the if the contract contains that uh, the uh, after the execution of uh, the, uh, the, the document then uh, if the if any clause is there for continuous monitoring the development of work then that is not enforceable in law a contract touching the personal qualifications namely if an if an agreement was entered into with a cine star or a singer or even a painter uh, for a purpose that you should uh, draw this kind of picture or should act in my film for this much uh, this much period if there was any breach committed then that cannot be enforced under section 14 similarly section 16 personal bar if readiness and willingness has not been pleaded and proved then uh, he can raise uh, as a valid defense then uh, personal bar if uh, if a plaintiff has taken some false plea if a plaintiff has not approached the court with clean hands uh, or he has withheld some material information uh, or he has taken some undue adva- advantage uh, or uh, or some uh, or a non ist factum taking advantage of illicit illiteracy or innocence uh, document has been created fabricated uh, then uh, those differences uh, also uh, can be raised even uh, document is denied very education of the document is denied then these are all the differences which are available i am only giving the list are only illustrative i am it is not exhaustive and it depends upon a particular uh, uh, case and particular uh, defense to be taken in the said suit these are all the normal differences which are available in a suit for a specific performance then we will go to the next aspect is a personal discretionary relief this is an important provision under the specifically fact section 20 of the pre amended act now section 20 of the pre amended act has been completely repealed that we are going to deal with it later so if discretionary relief always the uh, uh, suit for specific performance is a discretionary relief merely because the agreement is genuine merely because the advance was uh, 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 different has admitted the receipt of the advance amount court is not entitled to grant the relief court should always uh, as always a discretion to reject the, uh, the the suit so either granting or refusing the relief is purely discretion discretion of the court this discretion is traceable under section 10 under section particularly under section 20 of the act so 20 is very clear 20 exclusively deals with the discretion of the court the very caption of the act specifically specifically says that discretion to be exercised so now that discretion of section 20 has been completely repealed so the suits which were filed prior to the amendment <coughs> uh, has to be tried in the on the basis of uh, section 20 and uh, this uh, discretion uh, cannot be exercised in uh, in whims and fancies discretion has to be exercised based on some uh, sound judicial uh, principle because the discretion exercised is subject to the correction in the court of appeal therefore court cannot uh, uh, exercise the discretion in fact i understand that uh, the discretion has been exercised in a random manner uh, depending upon the the, uh, the uh, depending upon the in- interpretation of the judges concern now that uh, the that, that discretion power given under section 20 has been completely repealed by the legislature with effect from 1 8 to 2018 but however the suit filed earlier uh, have to be tried only on, uh, under the existing scenario so if you read section 20 class 2 of the pre amended provision which says that if the plaintiff takes unfair ad- unfair advantage over the uh, um, uh, defendant then he can be non suited and if any hardship has been caused to the uh, 
defendant then he can plaintiff can be non suitant or it is inequitable to enforce then he can be non suitant take an example uh, so just i'm given a uh, one instant or uh, an example that uh, a person was in need of money uh, for some educational expenses then an agreement was entered into uh naturally it is quite natural on the part of uh, the uh, the person who was in need of money to enter into uh, enter into an agreement or some kind of mortgage without knowing the legal consequence of it then the uh, the, uh, the money lender used to take advantage over the uh, the person who received money from him so uh, in such circumstances court should not entertain the suit for specific performance that is the view taken so he plaintiff should not take advantage unfair advantage over the defendant similarly uh, uh, the some hardship even in the said example the, the the person who borrowed money would not have anticipated that uh, the plaintiff would uh, misuse uh, the uh, agreement in future so in, the, in, the, in such cases he should he should not be given the benefit if you take section 22 section 20 class 2 which again says that mere inadequacy of price is not is a, is not a relevant factor and contract is onerous to the defendant is unenforceable some harsh conditions are imposed and it is it gives some unfair unfair benefit to the plaintiff and undue harassment to the defendant then it should be provisions that benefit cannot be extend so the discretion is purely with the court uh, that is why the very provision says that uh, the court is not entitled to grant the relief merely because it is lawful to do so even assuming that it is lawful to do so court is not entitled to grant the relief that is why the uh, the, uh, the section 16c and the section 20 class 1 specifically says that uh, there is a personal bar attached against the plaintiff not against the defendant personal bar attached against the uh, plaintiff the reason being is that the person who approaches the court should approach the court with the clean hands he should not withhold the material facts he should not tell lie he should not take a false plea that is why the uh, 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 there is a personal bar attached against the plaintiff under section 20 uh, of the act there are number of uh, judgments to that effect uh, 2010 3 CTC 411, 2010, 3 CTC 411, 2017, 2017 4 SC, uh, SCC, 2017 4 SCC 654, 654, 2011, 2011 SCC 147, 2011 SCC 147 2013 SCC 546 2013 SCC 546 2017 MWN 2017 MWN 105 very recently the division bench of madras high court in 2018 4 ctc 13 2018 4 ctc 13 in all these judgments supreme court as the division bench madras high court as well as supreme court uh, have taken the view that uh, if uh, the, uh, the the personal bar attached to the plaint attached against the plaintiff Uh, has to be seriously taken note of for the purpose of uh, uh, granting or refusing to grant the uh, equitable relief that is the view held in all the cases and above all always the court should take note of uh, the conduct of the parties would have seen under section 52 of the evidence act uh, which also deals with the conduct of the parties in a civil suit it may not have any relevant relevance in a, in a in a criminal case but as far as civil suits are concerned the conduct of the parties are more relevant particularly in a super specific performance conduct has to be taken note of very seriously in fact there are a lot of judgments which says that the merely only on the ground of fault on the part of the plaintiff he was non suitant suppose the plaintiff has approached the court with the uh, uh, 
with the false plea or he has withheld the material information or he has not disclosed the full facts or he has done some fraud which is undue influence then always court should see that the plaintiff is non suited the leading decisions of the judgments on this on this aspect is 2017 seven uh, mlj so 2017 7 mlj 513 513 2011 5 ctc 2011 5 ctc 543 2007 uh, uh, 7 12 2012 7 sec 2012 7 sec 476 2014 5CTC 2014 5CTC 729 in all these cases uh, uh, the courts have held that if the uh, if the plaintiff has not approached the court with clean hands he should be non suited similarly uh, the, if the defendant has not approached the court with the clean hands uh, then uh, he should suffer that is the another view of uh, uh, the courts one 2018 2008 2008 3mlj 951 2008 3mlj 951 equal to ar uh, so equal to 2088 2008 11sec 45 2008 11sec 45 2015 2015 1sec 705 705 2017 7mlj 17 7mlj 823 in all these cases the courts have held that equally the defendant also should approach the court even though there is a personal bar personal bar attached against the plaintiff under section 16 as well as section 20 but uh, the, that doesn't mean that uh, the uh, defendant can approach the court unclean hands both that is because the entire relief is based on equity so person who seeks equity must approach the court with the clean hands if not the person who approach the court with the unclean hands should be non suited is a foundation principle which we have to take note of i have given few judgments for the against the plaintiff and few judgments against the defendant also all right then we will go to an another important uh, aspect about loan transaction in fact i have seen almost uh, in more than 50% of the uh, uh, specific performance cases the defense plea has been uh, taken that uh, it was uh, towards a loan transaction if you uh, please uh, keep it in mind if a plea of loan transaction is taken the defendant is one way of admitting the education of the document so uh, once he has taken the plea of loan transaction then uh, we have to presume that the execution of uh, the document is not in dispute and the, the defendant who sets up a plea of a specific plea of uh, at the loan transaction has to prove it in the manner known to law the number of judgments have earlier earlier come i will tell all those judgments uh, which says that uh, if a defendant has set up a plea which is contrary to the one which is recorded in the document uh, is uh, he, uh, he cannot uh, he cannot be allowed to get the benefit take an example if uh, in a suit for uh, specific performance defendant has taken the plea that it was uh, towards a loan transaction except uh, making such plea in the written statement he has not come with any concrete proof but uh, simultaneously the plea taken in the written state uh, plea taken in the written statement is diametrically contrary to the terms recorded in the agreement itself so in such a case then he is not entitled to take that plea because he is saying something which is not there in the agreement so that cannot be entertained and we have to read the contract as a whole and we have to apply then relief has to be granted if he sets up a new plea then it is for him to prove it therefore the uh, the division bench particularly in 1993 two law weekly 1993 two law weekly 205 to 1993 two law weekly 205 2003 1 mlj 694 2003 1 mlj 694 both division with judgments 2010 5 mlj 899 2010 5 mlj 
2010 5 CTC 653, 10 CTC 653, 6CTC 601. In all these judgment, uh, the uh, um, uh, Supreme Court, not 2000, Supreme Court judgment is 2007 4 MLJ. 2007 for MLJ 193. In all the judgments, courts have held that uh, 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 defendant is not supposed to take a plea which is contrary to the uh, recitals found in the document. And uh, there are contra views also. I will give uh, the, the, that judgment also. 2012 for CTC 100. 2012 for CTC 100. 2012. 2 MWN, 2012, 2 MWN, 342, 342, 2017, 1 MWN, 187, 187. In all these three judgments, uh, the courts have held that uh, if uh, uh, agreement was executed and uh, uh, a small portion of amount was given by of, by way of uh, advance, uh, and for larger amount, short period of time was fixed. Take an example: agreement was uh, agreement was executed for ten lakhs. Uh, Seven lakhs was paid, or eight lakhs was paid for payment of two lakhs. Uh, three years time was fixed. Then uh, it is it is quite natural to believe that it is only loan transaction is not an agreement. If substantial portion of the amount has been paid towards uh, uh, advance, then no prudent man. Uh, would fix uh, three years time for the purpose of completion of uh, the contract. So in these decisions, uh, uh, the uh, courts have taken the view that for uh, for uh, for a uh, uh, paltry sum, if a longer time has been fixed, uh, it's quite natural that it is only a loan transaction. The view taken. There are few more judgments. You can also keep those judgments in mind uh, while while um, while uh, try, uh, conducting a case in respect of uh, a loan transaction. That is uh, 2019, 3CTC, 2019-3CTC, 2019-3CTC, 6.79, 2017-5CTC, 17-5CTC, 3.90, 2016-6CTC, 225. 2016, 4CTC, 152, 152, 2015, 6CTC, 810, 2017, 7, 2017, 3 law weekly, 92. In a plea of loan transaction, how it has to be proved? Uh, mere, I have taken number of cases, except uh, making some vague allegation in the plaint, uh, normally the defendant uh, would not venture to prove the defense plea. Once he has taken the plea of loan transaction, the burden is upon him to prove that it was executed towards some loan transaction. How to prove it? You can prove uh, by producing, uh, uh, namely, suppose a document, a register agreement was executed, on the same day, some other document, namely some Vartaman letter or unregistered agreement have been executed, or by summoning the records uh, from the register of firms uh, to show that uh, the, uh, the plaintiff is a, uh, a partner in a finance company, or he could show that uh, the rents were, the, the incomes, the interest were periodically collected by producing some uh, notebook uh, which was used by the financiers for the purpose of collecting rent. Or you can make use of uh, the uh, the uh, the persons who had acquaintance with the financier, or uh, um, you can also you can also make use of the situation that uh, for a small amount longer time has been fixed, or you can also plead you can also take a stand that uh, would have given a um, complaint to the police or SP saying that the financier uh, is misusing the uh, uh, document in such a way you have to prove because once a plea of loan transaction has been taken 
uh, the then the defendant is taking a plea which is contrary to contrary to the own record in the document itself so burden is upon him to uh, uh, prove it so always uh, uh, while taking the plea uh, we we should uh, keep it in our mind that uh, the defendant is having enough uh, documents for the purpose of proving his defense otherwise uh, vague plea of loan transaction could enable to the plaintiff to succeed in a suit for specific performance then uh, next one is uh, burden of proof uh, i would put uh, uh, on important decision of the supreme court in a burden of proof take an example an agreement was executed an unreached agreement defendant says that i have not executed then the burden is not upon him to prove that it was not executed because there is no negative burden in the evidence act the person who is relying upon the document namely under the agreement that is plaintiff has to prove that it was duly executed by the uh, defendant if a defendant has specifically denied the very execution and existence of the agreement the law expects the defendant the plaintiff to prove that it was duly executed uh, on a particular date in the presence of the witnesses if not then he has to suffer the the leading judgment of supreme court is uh, tirubengana pillai amal case 2008 four sec 2008 four sec 530 2008 four sec 530 equal to 2008 two mlj 315 315 and 2013 15 sec 198 2013 15 sec 198 which says that the plaintiff has to prove that uh, um, uh, the agreement is not uh, anti dated and it was uh, executed uh, by the defendant concern on the particular date then uh, if a, a plea of fraud mis- misrepresentation or uh, duress uh, are taken then it is for the defendant to prove such plea clearly under order 6 rule 4 cpc if a, if a clear plea of fraud mere allegation of fraud is not enough something more is needed he should set out how the document has been fraudulently obtained and uh, duress was influenced or undue influence was taken all those defenses have to be specifically 2013-15 SCC 198. So the defendant has to plead those defenses clearly as per Order 6, Rule 14, Order 6, Rule 4, CPC. Uh, I give few decisions then. 2018-1 MWN 165. 2018-1 MWN 165. 2015-2015-1 2015 1CTC 107, 2015 1CTC 107, 2017 1CTC 107, 2018 CTC 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 
would be there in the receipt or in the oral agreement so it is very very uh, too dangerous to take the uh, to uh, to lay a foundation on the basis of uh, uh, this uh, oral agreement or receipt uh, law is settled in th three judgments 2016 four law weekly 2016 four law weekly 417 2016 2MWN, 2016 2MWN 673, 673, 2005 CTC 17. Suppose uh, if a dependent defendant has denied the very execution of the uh, uh, document, then it is for the uh, plaintiff to take steps to get an expert opinion. You have already noted Thirubhagana Pillai and Navani Dhamal case 2018 for SEC 530, 2008 for SEC 530 equivalent to AR 2008 Supreme Court, AR 2000 Supreme Court 1541, which is clearly says that always uh, court should get an expert opinion and court is not an expert, therefore opinion of an expert has to be obtained. Suppose the court has decided to opt, opt for section 73, then court has to Uh, uh, study the document uh, and uh, in the presence of both the parties and their counsel court has to ascertain the similarities and dissimilarities by using magnifying glass and differences has to be identified and uh, there must be there's, there must be some reasoning for uh, 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 taking decision on the basis of section 73 of evidence act mere uh, uh, glance perusal court can come to a conclusion that uh, the documents are similar in nature Our signatures found in the dispute and admitted signature are different in nature. No such a uh, rational conclusion could be arrived. There must be some foundation. There must be some foundation, and there must be some findings uh, after comparing the document. Court has to give reasonings as to why such a decision was taken. Similarities and dissimilarities should be identified, and reasonings to be incorporated to judgment itself. Otherwise, comparing the document and saying in one line. that i have applied my mind and uh, as uh, and i found that both the signatures are one and the same are not a correct conclusion the view taken by the uh, courts and similarly this lantilita mortem document alone can be compared a document with the admitted signature which came into existence subsequent to the suit agreement cannot be used any signature which came into existence subsequent to the suit agreement cannot be used even written statement or uh, uh, the uh, signatures in the uh, affidavit signatures in the vakalat or signatures in subsequent document cannot be used for the purpose of comparison contemporaneous document must be used documents which is anterior to the disputed document has to be used for the purpose of comparison that is only anti litam mortem documents uh, 2014 1mwn 88 this has been set out 2014 1mwn 88 then if uh, different uh, inks uh, and different stamps uh, stamp papers has been used then court uh, is entitled to display the transaction if you see uh, the agreement would have been executed at uh, uh, parties parties are at erode but documents would have been obtained at coimbatore or chennai or document would have been obtained in different name uh, few years ago or few months ago then it creates doubt in the mind of the court and it is for the plaintiff to prove as to how it was that those doc, stamp papers and uh, uh, documents documents were used for the purpose of uh, executing the agreement so uh, uh, for, for that proposition i would like to cite 2013 5 mlj 2013 5 mlj 667 2013 5 667 2015 4 ctc 116 15 4 ctc 116 2015 three law weekly 575 575 but if you take judgment of supreme court in the thirubagana plains navani damal case 2008 four ctc four scc 2008 four scc 530 supreme court has as as said that merely because document is not documents are not in consecutive number because uh, uh, even though three 10 rupees stamp papers had been used in each uh, all the three stamp papers are not in consecutive number or it was obtained in different place 
on that score the document cannot be rejected is a view taken in the said judgment supreme court said uh, nowhere the stamp act uh, mandates that uh, for the purpose of executing a document agreement uh, all the documents should be obtained uh, consecutively and in fact even as uh, plain paper is enough for the purpose of executing agreement that is why supreme court has said so but in uh, the subsequent three judgments i have uh, referred uh, or uh, uh, the judgment of madras high court which clearly says that if uh, if uh, some doubt is created in the mind of the court about the manner in which the documents have been old documents have been used uh, then that is a ground to non suit the plaintiff then we will go to the next topic is forfeiture or refund of uh, advance amount you know well section 22 of the specific act is very clear that refund cannot be ordered unless specifically asked for so there must be a alternative prayer for refund of advance amount then only in the event of not granting the main relief court could award uh, alternative relief even though provision is there courts have taken the consistent view even in the absence of prayer refund of advance amount can be ordered uh, i want to quote the 2017 5 MLJ 2017 5 MLJ 385 385 2017 5 law weekly 2017 5 law weekly 46 2018 for CTC 13 2018 for CTC 13 2019 three CTC 2019 three CTC 564 564 2020 1 MLJ 2020 1 MLJ 780 2015 5 SCC 2015 5 SCC 609 These are all the judgment in which the Supreme Court Madras uh, Division Bench uh, held that even the absence of any prior any any prior for refund refund can be ordered and uh, another issue whether refund of the whether the uh, uh, advance amount can be forfeited it is not uh, it can't be forfeited entirely suppose if an ag- amount was given towards earnest money there is there are lot of difference between earnest money and advance amount earnest me you know earnest money means uh, some amount given towards uh, confirming the contract it is not form part of the sale consideration to be adjusted in future suppose if uh, agree agree on sale sale agreement was uh, for 10 lakhs uh, but instead of paying the advance amount uh, 50000 was given towards earnest money that means to confirm the contract that 50000 will not be adjusted to uh, in the sale consideration then that 50000 is not refundable if any amount is given towards advance uh, then that advance amount is adjustable in the sale consideration that is refundable if money paid towards earnest money it is not refundable if amount paid towards advance amount it is refundable that is the view of the supreme court in 2013 2013 one sec 345 2013 one sec 345 2014 13 sec 522 522 then another aspect suppose uh, the court has decided to grant relief then court is entitled to award more than the amount agreed under the agreement similarly if the court has agreed to dismiss the suit then court is empowered to order for refund of uh, uh, more amount than the advance paid to the defendant to take an example i have i have entered an agreement to purchase a property for 10 lakhs i have paid 5 lakhs advance so i have filed a suit if the court has decided to grant the relief after its few years instead of directing me to pay 10 lakhs court can direct me to pay 20 lakhs or additional 5 lakhs or any amount so the court has discretion to enhance the consideration agreed by taking note of the long period of litigation and the price rise in the market and other developments and uh, various uh, circumstances uh, uh, in the suit similarly if the court has decided to dismiss my suit uh, instead of directing the defendant to pay 5 lakhs which was which i have paid as an advance uh, court could ask the defendant to pay 10 lakhs as an adver- uh, to uh, as an ad- uh, refund the 10 lakhs uh, instead of 5 lakhs which was received 
so for granting or refusing court is empowered to take uh, empowered to raise the price raise the amount that is always permissible so mere refund of uh, advance somebody is not enough court can ask the def uh, defendant to pay some more amount or two two times two times or three times of the amount uh, because he is going to retain the property is only repaying the amount suppose after 10 years if he is directed to refund the very same amount then plaintiff will be deprived of therefore the court is empowered to enhance or uh, 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 the amount for degreeing or refusing that is the position of law held in 2002 8 sec 146 2002 8 sec 146 equivalent to 2002 4 ctc 2002 4 ctc 424 424 in my case the i have quoted and i got the benefit of that enhancement in 2017 1 ctc 46 2017 1 ctc 46 then 2015 5 law weekly 2015 5 3 law weekly 2015 3 law weekly 246 equivalent to 2015 2 mlj 530 the next one uh, you we have seen under article 54 suit for specific performance has to be filed within a period of three years from the date of date fixed under the document or three, three years from the date of refusal whereas Suit for refund of advance amount is concerned. Limitation is not three years. Limitation is twelve years. Suit for refund of advance amount is concerned. Period of limitation is twelve years. Uh, you may be asking me as yes, why uh, twelve years. Supreme Court uh, in uh, 2001 CTC 507, 2001 CTC 507 has held that uh, under Article 62 of the Limitation Act, period of limitation for refund of advance amount is twelve years because on the uh, when the uh, for the uh, advance amount paid under the agreement a charge is created over the property that charge is nothing but a charge created uh, by a statute under section 100 tp transfer property act so uh, it is not a simple money paid it is a money paid on the property therefore supreme court has interpreted article uh, 62 of the limitation act in uh, in uh, in line with uh, section 100 of the transfer of property act added further section 55 6 b 55 class 6 subclass b of the transfer of property act clearly says that uh, a charge is created over the unpaid purchase money unpaid purchase money so this is a statutory charge and uh, plaintiff can be denied uh, the refund only when there is a fault on his part. Suppose the plaintiff is not at fault, the court can award refund even after uh, up to uh, up to 12 years. Suppose the plaintiff is uh, at fault, if he, if he has improperly declined to act on the agreement, then he is not entitled to. In fact, uh, limitation is concerned, it's a period of limitation is three years. Law has been well settled. I would quote a few more decisions also. 2004, 3 SEC, 2000. 4 3 SEC 711 2013 6 CTC 2013 6 CTC 28 2000 equal to 2013 5 law weekly 253 next one 2016 6 CTC 16 6 CTC 740 equal to 16 5 law weekly 820. 16 5 law weekly 820. 2016 4 MLJ 2016 4 MLJ 17. Then 2017 2 law weekly 994. 2017 2 law weekly 994. The last one 2008. In all these judgment, these uh, 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 courts uh, the courts have held that period of limitation is uh, 12 years. And uh, suppose, but uh, uh, after there are two uh, aspects. After the execution of the agreement, uh, the plaintiff, uh, the defendant has cancelled the agreement. 
or he has executed a sale deed in favor of a third party then there is no concluded contract because already a different has dealt with uh, the supreme court has held that even assuming that the property has been sold to a third party the third party purchaser also should be made as a party to the suit and degree has to be passed against him merely because the property there was one view of the supreme court which says that once the property has been sold unless that sale deed is challenged in the manner known to law then relief cannot be specific performance relief cannot be granted is the view taken originally but consistent view of the supreme court from 1954 first judgment is ar 1954 supreme court 75 AR 1954 Supreme Court 75 by three judges bench followed in 2019 3 SEC 2019 3 SEC 520 then 2019 8 MLJ 2019 8 MLJ 431 431 in all these judgment Supreme uh, Courts have held Madras High Court Supreme Courts have held that. there is no need for seeking cancellation of the sale deed which was executed pending suit or subsequent to the agreement the even the purchaser can be made can, can be directed to execute the sale deed along with the existing defendants is the view taken there are contra views also 2014 1 law weekly 47 2014 1 law weekly 47 2017 4 sec 2017 4 sec 654 654 SEC 18 SEC 761 so these are these these three judgments uh, uh, say that uh, uh, there should be a specific prior for cancellation but uh, if, if we look into the old judgment 1954 three judges bench judgment which says that even the subsequent purchasers who have been made as a party can be directed to execute the sale deed along with the defendant and the cancellation of the sale deed is not necessary is the view taken then we will go to uh, <clears throat> suppose the suit was filed defendant has filed return statement he has not come to the witness box uh, or somebody has come on record either for the plaintiff or defendant in a suit of this nature if the parties to the suit has not come to the witness box supreme court said an adverse inference has to be drawn under 114g of the evidence act section 114g of the evidence act ar 1999 supreme court 1441 ar 1999 supreme court 1441 so best evidence should come to the uh, court no party is entitled to uh, uh, abstain from the witness box if we abstain from witness box court has to draw an adverse inference 2010 10 SEC 512 also 2010 10 SEC 512. Even though uh, section uh, 20 speaks uh, that uh, escalation of price is not a ground uh, for rejecting the specific performance, uh, courts have evaluated that uh, we cannot ignore the galloping increase of price. Uh, so price rise because of the pendency of litigation also to be taken into consideration the view taken by the courts in 2012 5 sec 712 2012 5 sec 712 2002 5 sec 681 68 481 2002 5 sec 481 2015 one sec 2015 one SEC 597, 2007 two law weekly, 2007 two law weekly 791, 2009 three MLJ six, 2009 three MLJ six. Now all the judgment Supreme Court has considered. I have given uh, judgments on either side. So price highs to be taken note of. I have given. price rise rise need not be taken into account in, the, in if you read these statements then you can easily uh, understand in uh, what are all the cases in which price rise can be taken and what are all the cases in which the price rise can be rejected then uh, normally once you have written statement has been filed and take plea of uh, loan transfer is taken i have already said uh, parties are not entitled to 
take a little evidence contrary to the recitals of the document you know well section 91 and 92 of the evidence act is clearly says that no party to the document is entitled to little oral evidence contradicting the terms recorded in the document suppose sale agreement is not in dispute but oral evidence uh, oral still oral evidence is permissible to show that what was recorded in the sale agreement is uh, is not to operate as an agreement it is all together for a different transaction so evidence to that effect is permissible no doubt document says but plaintiff is entitled to so defendant is entitled to written evidence to show that this uh, agreement was executed not executed towards uh, uh, for selling the property this was executed towards loan transaction this was executed towards the transaction this was executed in a blank uh, signed uh, papers and this was all together for different purpose so oral evidence is not totally prohibited oral evidence is well permissible for uh, proving the written start, uh, document leading decisions are 2007 one law weekly 309 division bench 2007 one law weekly 309 2011 5 ctc 2011 5 ctc 543 2008 to ctc 2008 to ctc 382 2009 six ctc 301 301 2007 5 mlj 2007 5 mlj 222 ar 1966 supreme court AR 1960 Supreme Court 2025, AR 1997 Supreme Court 1285, 97 Supreme Court 1285. Then lispendants purchaser. Next one lispendants purchaser. Purchaser subsequent to the agreement, purchaser pending suit are entitled to come on record even as per section 19 small b, 19 sub clause b of the specific relief act. in the specifically uh, relief act itself clearly says that the persons who got uh, right or uh, derived title or having some semblance of right or uh, entitled to come on record uh, in the suit and they can defend uh, as if uh, they can defend by stepping into the shoes of the defendant even purchasers can step into the shoes of the original defendant or their vendors for the purpose of defending the suit ar 2000 supreme court 860 AR 2000 Supreme Court 860 equivalent to 2002 SCC 2002 SCC 428 2007 9 SCC 2007 9 SCC 660 2000 equivalent to 2008 one law weekly 62 62 subsequent purchasers can be come on record can be implemented as a matter of right 2012 7 scc 2012 7 scc 738 2013 2 ctc 2013 2 ctc 104 supreme court 2005 2 ctc 2005 2 ctc 676 2019 2019 to law weekly 906 these are all judgments in which the supreme court courts have held that uh, lispendant purchase can be brought on record similarly in a suit for specific performance the title can be gone into title has no issue title to the property cannot be gone into 2005 2 ctc 676 2005 2 ctc 676 2017 7 mlj 823 17 mlj 823 and uh, in a suit for specific performance if a, uh, a possession is a consequential to uh, the main relief in some cases we would have been omitted to seek the relief of possession we would have simply asked for uh, the declare the direction to execute the sale deed in terms of the agreement we would have been missed to pray for possession and the decisions have some decisions have come which says that if you have specific, if you have not prayed for possession there is the matter supreme court said no it is not uh, correct and even in the options of specific specific uh, prayer for possession 
since the possession is a consequential to the main relief so possession can be granted uh, by 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 of uh, filing ep even in the options of a, a, a class in the degree to that effect 2018 2018 for ctc 40 2018 for ctc 40 2012 one ctc 2012 one ctc 823 2014 four mlj 61 four mlj 61 AR 1982 Supreme Court AR 1982 Supreme Court 818 2011 3 CTC 2011 3 CTC 470 470 2018 2018 1 CTC 342 18 1 CTC 342 2018 4 CTC 4 CTC 721. And I have uh, before going to the new amendment act, I want to uh, refer about one, one more provision that is section 26 of the specifically pact that speaks about rectification of instrument. You would be wondering if you read uh, section 26 of the specifically pact. Suppose I have executed an agreement in favor of Mr. Subhas. there is some typographical error in the schedule some uh, mistake in boundary or mistake in survey number or mistake in extent then without noticing that suit was filed and the suit was uh, pending or uh, even uh, execution stage there is no uh, the difficulty at all suppose if, even before filing the suit the plaintiff uh, has come to know about the defect he can ask for a separate prayer in the suit itself ask for rectification of the instrument that he can ask for if he has not if he has not noticed it before filing the suit or but he has noticed it only later he can do so by of amendment in the pending suit even assuming that he has not noticed pending suit or before suit and noticed it only after degree it can be rectified the leading judgment of uh, uh, supreme court 2008 4 scc 2008 4 scc 102 102 equal to 2008 3 law weekly 52 2008 3 law weekly 52 2010 11 scc 2010 11 scc 514 514 2013 3 scc 801 2013 3 scc 801 now all the judgment supreme court has held that uh, and uh, many may not know that uh, even the defect in the document uh, can be rectified it can be rectified it may be due to some human error or mutual mistake and uh, some uh, inadvertent omission but on the score uh, part uh, plaintiff need not be non suited and it can, he can be allowed to rectify that is the position of law you can take note of suppose um, if um, uh all right suit was decreed you would have seen in all the suit was specific performance time would have been granted for the purpose of depositing the balance amount if there is no time limit fixed no problem if time limit has been fixed to deposit the balance amount if the plaintiff has not deposited the uh, balance amount within a period of 2 months or 3 months as the case may be uh, in the event of non payment uh, the uh, plaintiff is plaintiff has an option to move the court uh, for extension of time court will not become functus officio court still the court which has granted the relief uh, still retains the power to extend the time it is permissible but uh, not in all cases it is uh, the discretion has to be exercised judicially suppose if the defendant has approached uh, 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 before the plaintiff approach in the court for uh, rescission of the contract namely suppose time limit three months time has been fixed for return of advance amount the yeah, uh, amount was sir, 3 months time has been fixed for the purpose of depositing the balance amount within 3 months plaintiff has not deposited then at the end of 3 months the defendant has approached the court for the purpose of rescission of the contract by filing application under section 28 of the specifically fact then thereafter if the plaintiff has approached 
the court has no option except to reject the relief uh, and uh, suit has to be dismissed even after degreeing the suit still the court retains the power to rescind, rescind the contract in the event of non default deposit of the amount within the time stipulated in the uh, degree if no time limit is fixed then uh, the plaintiff has to approach the court uh, has to deposit the amount within reasonable uh, period of time if he has not approached the court within a reasonable point of time and he deposits after a few years then he should be non suited and the suit uh, has to be dismissed number of judgments are there i give only few decisions 2014 2 to ctc 93 2014 2CTC 93, 2015 9SEC 52, 2015 9SEC 52, 2013 2CTC 2013 2CTC 518, 2013 2013 4Law Weekly 626, 2013 4Law Weekly 626. 2009 3MLJ, 2009 3MLJ 1267. In all these cases, courts uh, have held that uh, whether time would be extended or not extended has been discussed. I have given all the judgments. You pl please keep uh, section 28 in mind uh, in the event of non deposit of the amount by the plaintiff within the time granted by the court. In a suit for specific performance, uh, you should always uh, uh, see that uh, whether proper issues have been framed. Uh, according according to me in my experience uh, i go uh, i go uh, i will tell you there are four major issues which are necessary in a suit for specific performance because there is a duty uh, cost upon us uh, to tell the court to frame proper issues under order 14 rule 2 order 14 rule 2 3 4 5 which specifically says that there's uh, specific issues has to be framed the first issue whether the plaintiff was ready and willing to perform his part of the contract in terms of section 16 whether the plaintiff is uh, was ready and willing to perform his part of the contract under section 16 one whether whether it is it, whether it was a case for exercise of the discretion whether it, it was a case for exercise of discretion to direct specific performance in terms of section 20 in terms of section 20 of the act three whether there were latches on the part of the plaintiff, whether there were latches on the part of the plaintiff in approaching the court to enforce the specific performance, including the limitation. I have not specifically uh, framed, I mean, including the limitation. Latches includes limitation. Fourth one, whether the plaintiff has approached the court with the clean hands. Similarly, defendant also. So these are all the main reliefs uh, 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 we have to keep it in mind at the time of framing the issues by the court. If there are if these issues have not been framed, we should apprise the court to frame additional issues. Then, then only you can address all the uh, points cumulatively. So now we almost we have come to the main uh, enactment. We are going to deal with uh, the amended act. The specifically fact has been amended uh, on 1-8-2018. On 1-8-2018, this amended act came into force. Came into force on 1-10-2018. What, what are all the amendments, amendments made under the act? Under chapter 2 of the specific fact. Section 10 has been amended substantially. Section 10 has been uh, amended substantially. The earlier provision was Section 10, pre amended Section 10 reads as follows Cases in which specific performance of contract enforceable, cases in which specific performance contract enforceable. Uh, the, the certain classes of uh, contract which can be enforced has been uh, stated and the court has discretion the word wordings in the earlier original uh, original pre amended provision is 
except otherwise provided in this chapter except otherwise provided in this chapter the specific performance of any contract may in the discretion of the court be enforced may in the discretion of the court be enforced so we have to keep it in mind two words one the uh, may and the discretion now the discretion is taken away now the entire section 10 has been substituted the amended provision reads like this specific performance in respect of contracts specific performance in respect of contracts section 10 of the new act says that the specific performance of contract shall be enforced so the may which was there in the original act is no longer available now the specific performance of the contract shall be enforced by the court ex subject to the provisions of the section 11 class 2 14 and 16 so these are all the exceptions so all the contracts are enforceable except the contract which are set out under section 11 bracket 2 14 and 16 we will go to uh, one after another in due course so we will go uh, we will consider the section 12 because uh, section 10 says uh, there is an exclusion under section 11 to what 11 one says 11 one says in respect of contract in respect of trust properties are enforceable there is no difficulty trust properties can also be enforced if you if you read uh, section 11 to it is an exception uh, in in respect so far as enforceable is concerned which says that if a trustee who entered into a contract has acted against the as uh, as acted contrary to the power given then that is not enforceable that's what 11 2 speaks so uh, these are the provision then we'll go to section 12 specific performance of part part of contract uh, in, in this case also the earlier the uh, uh, the discretion was given i will read the earlier provision earlier provision says uh, except or ex except as otherwise here and after provided in this section the court may in the discretion of the court as like section 10 here also discretion was given to the court may in its discretion court can enforce that was the earlier provision now the amended provision now the uh, may has been substituted with the word shall and the discretion given to the court is now taken away now the new act says that except as otherwise here and after provided in this section the court shall not direct specific performance of the contract court shall not direct specific performance of the contract so negative word it is uh, uh, in uh, uh, the uh, performance of the part of the contract part of a contract this will arise in a case where suppose the son has executed father and son are the owners a son has executed an agreement in respect of entire property then Uh, whereas he is not the owner of the entire property he is only owner of the off property so uh, even though agreement is for the entire property specific performance can be enforced only in respect of the share of the son because he cannot execute an agreement in respect of the share of the father so agreement is valid that is specific performance of a part of the contract can be enforced provided if it is in respect of only the son's share not in respect of the entire share even though agreement may be for entire property but it cannot be enforced for the entire property leading decision under section 12 is 2011 11 scc 2011 11 scc 153 equivalent to ar 2011 ar 2011 supreme court 103 103 2008 18 2008 1 CTC 701. Section uh, 12. I have already read the provision. Uh, specific performance of a con part of a contract. It is not like section 53 capital A of the transfer property. Don't don't confuse with this section 12 with that of section 53 capital A of the transfer property. That is altogether different. To protect possession, this is nothing to do with the 53 A. this is in respect of part performance of uh, part of the contract court shall not direct the specific performance of a contract that is mentioned section 12 1 exceptions are set out in 2 3 4 so 12 class uh, 2 12 class 3 12 class 4 are exception to section 12 class 1 so i have given example so part of the contract can be enforced because for the remaining part 
the person who executed the agreement is not the owner so what are the circumstances in which it can be executed has been set out i have given the leading decision 2012 2012 na sollinga 2011 11 scc 153 equivalent to ar 2011 supreme court 103 another judgment 2018 1 ctc 701 then section 13 section 13 no amendment has been brought in the original provision has been retained which says that right of purchaser or lessee against a person whom no title or imperfect title so this is in respect of person having imperfect title uh, this provision is almost like section 43 of the transfer of property act that deals with um, uh, feeding by grant by estoffel feeding by grant by estoffel under section 43 suppose if an uh, uh, i have executed an agreement in respect of a property of my father though i have had no right over the property as on the date of the agreement but after uh, the after the demise of the father if a son gets the right over the property it can be enforced so yes on the date of the agreement the pers uh, person who executed the document namely the vendor uh, uh, had no right but he had executed the agree uh, he got right subsequently so though he had no right yes on the date of the agreement in view of the subsequent development he acquired right over the property therefore the agreement which was executed earlier can be uh, can be enforced is under section 13 this is nothing but feeding the feeding the grant by estoffel yes uh, found in section 43 of the uh, transfer of property act then we will go to section 14 please keep it in mind we have already seen in section 8, 10 section 10 deals with three exceptions one 112 112 11 speaks about trustee uh, without authority as yes, enter agreement that cannot be enforced that is 112 at the section 14 then section 16 is there we are going to deal with it later section 14 contracts not specifically enforceable enforceable what are the contracts cannot be executed uh, the original provision was contracts not specifically enforceable lot of uh, uh, provisions are there now that has been completely removed the entire pre amended 14 has been removed and uh, uh, new provisions have been inserted under section 14 under the new amend amended act there are three circumstances and which the contract cannot be specifically enforced one for four circumstances one there are par- the following contracts cannot be specifically enforced namely a where a party to the contract has obtained substituted performance of contract as per section 20 please let us not go into that section 20 now i am going to explain it little later so one of the four circumstances in which contract cannot be enforced first one is if the party to the contract has obtained the benefit under substitute contract leave it now two that is b a contract the performance of which involves performance of continuous duty which the court cannot supervise i have already said if a duty is cast upon the court to follow continuously it cannot be enforced take an example a contract was executed uh, with the railway and uh, railway has to Uh, take the uh, goods at delhi and it should be delivered at chennai and uh, this is this contract is a continuous one it is not going to be over on a particular act so it, it is continuous act so this is this is very difficult for the court to enforce it then it cannot be enforced then third one c a contract is also dependent upon the personal qualifications of the parties as i said already contract entering and uh, contract with the uh, uh, that the sine actors and the actor and the actress are uh, contract with uh, uh, um, painter contract with uh, 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 this uh, singers so it, it is it is depends upon personal qualification so these contracts cannot be enforced in court of law then last one contract which is na- which in nature in determinable, uh, determinable namely suppose parties themselves have agreed specifically that on spec- on on the event of some happenings uh, contracts cannot be enforced then contract itself speaks for that these, these are four circumstances contract cannot be enforced we have not dealt with section 20 that is the first exception under uh, that is the first uh, p- p- um, uh, 
contract which cannot be enforced as set out under section 14.1, which we are going to deal with it later. Then 14A was amended now. 14A. 14A, capital A, which says that now, yes, on today, after amendment act, the document, the, the court is empowered to get the assistance of an expert for the purpose of deciding an issue. What expert? Technical expert, because court is not a technical expert. Court can uh, summon the uh, technical experts and court can permit the parties to get an expert. Court can direct the parties to send for the expert for the purpose of uh, proving or establishing or clarifying certain uh, technical aspects, which is permissible in law. It is, it is nothing but the exercise of power under section 45 of the Evidence Act. That is, expert opinion can be done. And the uh, evidence of the expert opinion is admissible in evidence. And the, it is a, uh, the, the opinion is part and parcel of their court records. So this is a new development uh, which has been introduced by of Amendment to Section 14, Capital A of the Act. Then 14, the 15, who may obtain specific performance? Who can obtain this specifically mentioned? The specific performance, uh, the except otherwise provided, the specific performance can be obtained. So list of persons uh, given. That is a party there to our representative in interest of the principal there to. You would have seen in the agreement itself, in every agreement, uh, there is a specific clause. Uh, non or non authorized agreement. Section agreement can be enforced by a person's list of persons are set out under section 15. There is one amendment which was brought in. In FEA, it is uh, inconsequential because it says that suppose a limited liability firm, a limited liability partnership firm uh, was uh, was there, which entered into an agreement later, which was amalgamated with another firm. Then that uh, that uh, that uh, newly that is amalgamated firm can enforce it. So let us not confuse it. There are a list of uh, persons uh, uh, can in, uh, obtain the specific performance. The uh, we can uh, take note of uh, whenever occasion comes. Then personal relief, section 16 deals with personal bar. I have already told you, in this case also, specific performance of contract cannot be enforced. We have seen three exceptions under section 10. 1, 11, subclass 2. 2, section 14. 3, section 16. Section 16, personal bars uh, to get the relief. What are all the personal bars? 1, specific performance of contract cannot be enforced in favor of a person. A who has obtained substituted performance of a contract in section 20. We will deal with it later. Similarly, we have seen under section 14A. Here also there is a substituted contract under section 20, which we are going to deal with it later. B, 16B, incapable of performing. Contract who has become incapable of performing. Party himself become mad or insane, incapable of performing. Or violation of any essential terms. Terms of the contract has been completely violated. Or the contract is tainted with fraud, it cannot be enforced. Or any variations, the party to the document has completely varied the terms, willfully varied the terms. These are the conditions in which the contract cannot be enforced. Then 16C. 16C was an important provision in the pre amended act. Even in the present amended act also, it is a very important provision. Earlier, you would have seen 16C. He who fails to aver and prove, you would have seen contract cannot be enforced, enforced if he, he fails to aver and prove, that is pleading and proof, both must be there originally. Now, that our, uh, the word aver must aver has been taken away from section 16C. So, mere proof is enough. Readiness and willingness is concerned. Mere proof is enough. Pleading need not be there. Earlier, pre amended pleadings must be there and proof must be there. We have also referred as Order 6, Rule 3, and as well as Form 47. Now, the amended act after 1 2018, there is no obligation to plead. Mere proof is enough. That is, uh, that is there in Section 16C. Uh, Similarly, the explanation also, explanation 2. Uh, they uh, similarly the word our has been taken away the pleading the, the word our must our has been taken away only um, the plaintiff must prove the performance of our readiness and willingness that alone has been retained so the uh, our months which were required earlier 
is now taken away by the amended act then uh, section 17 vendor or lesser makes uh, this uh, not uh, much relevant then we will go to section uh, uh, 19 19 we have already seen relief uh, against parties or persons claiming under the subsequent title we have already seen subsequent purchasers are entitled to come on record and claim the relief section 619b specifically says any persons claiming under him by a, uh, a by, by a title arising subsequently to the contract except transfer for the value as paid money in good faith and without notice of original contract can be included therefore even the subsequent purchasers can also be uh, included and suit must be necessarily filed so three judgments i have already given 2005 2012 2013 you already noted at the time of discussion relating to list pendants purchaser so suit can be filed even against the list pendant purchaser it is enforceable in law the only thing the subsequent purchaser can escape provided if they could prove good faith and without notice of the original contract take an example suppose if it is a registered agreement then the purchaser can't take a plea that i am an innocent purchaser because the very registration is very much available in the registrar office so he cannot plead ignorance of uh, the earlier agreement he cannot take innocent purchaser suppose an unregistered agreement he, he may not know that there was an agreement available already so in such a case if he takes a plea in the written statement that i am a bona fide purchaser and i, I had no occasion to know about uh, the uh, agreement uh, the earlier agreement then the burden is upon the plaintiff to show that he is not a bona fide purchaser because under this agreement he, uh, the law expects them that uh, he, uh, he, the transfer is to take some some positive action to verify whether there was any encumbrance to the title over the property a purchaser has purchased for a lesser price than the price agreed in the agreement it's a circumstances to doubt this transaction suppose if a purchaser Uh, does not have original document the original documents are with the plaintiff or original documents are with the defendant and the purchaser say have purchased the property by giving some false uh, reasons namely documents are misplaced it is a circumstances to doubt this transaction so these are all the circumstances which we have to take note of while deciding the uh, uh, bona fideness of the purchaser then main and important provision is section 20 mm-hmm. you have seen all along even after the amended act agreement is enforceable there is no difficulty at all but there is a, there, there you have seen two exceptions under section 14a and 16a what does it say if uh, if uh, the i will read over moment specific performance a contract cannot be enforced in favor of a person who has obtained substituted performance what is substituted performance section 20 of the specific relief act which was originally uh, which was originally read as discretion as to degreeing specific performance the original unamended uh, preamended provision says that discretion as to degreeing specific performance that entire section now has been substituted and a new section has been placed uh, in that place so the earlier section is no longer available new section has come so the very purpose and object of this amendment is to Uh, take away the discretion given to the court you would have seen i have we already discussed that the even assuming the transaction is true the yeah, contract is to you advance amount is to then court is not supposed to do uh, order for uh, 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 specific specific performance so discretion is with the court and this discretion has been exercised in different manner that was that has caused a lot of uh, confusions therefore the legislature in their wisdom thought it fit to remove uh, the discretion which was given you would have seen in many places may has been replaced by shall discretion given under the other provisions also taken away here the uh, the uh, 620 was the very foundation for the discussion given already and now that the 20 has been completely taken away and removed in that place a new section has been uh, inserted i will uh, i will uh, i will read only two uh, this uh, section 20 alone because it is important provision substituted con- performance of contract uh, a 1 21 without prejudice uh, to the generality of the provision contained in the indian contract act and except otherwise agreed upon by the parties where the contract is broken due to non performance of a promise by any party the party 
who suffered by such breach shall have the option of substantial performance through substituted performance through a third party or his own agency and recover the expenses under other costs actually incurred spent or suffered by him from the party committing such uh, such breach you don't confuse yourself uh, because by reading this provision i'll explain it in a simple way i have executed an agreement with mr subhas to purchase some properties he has not uh, uh, performed his part of the contract even though i was ready he didn't perform his part of the contract in such a case i necessarily i have to uh, uh, purchase a particular property because for the purpose of starting a school or for some other purpose then i have opted to purchase the property from some third party in the same locality so instead of purchasing it from subhas i have purchased it from another person in the same locality so now i have incurred some i would have incurred some loss i would have purchased for some higher amount i would have incurred some expenditure for this so in such event after that is substitute contract means i have given up the main contract with the subhas now i am not going to enforce the contract with subhas i have i have entered into a different contract with another person purchase the property so in that process i would have incurred some cost i would have incurred some expenditure that expenses and uh, i have suffered can be recovered from the expenses or compensation or damage whatever may be the uh, even cost amount i am entitled to recover from mr subhas because he, he he was the defaulting party because of his default i have been forced to purchase another property why this the provision has been inserted you now you have seen 1963 act was enacted 1963 now almost uh, for more than five decades were over kindly see what was the developmental project at the time what was the development now and how many roads have come how many bridges have come how many companies have come how, how many foreign investors have come therefore uh, this existing act was unable to meet the Uh, scenario so the legislature thought because the foreigners were afraid of even the uh, afraid of investing the amount in india saying that if any breach of contract it may land it in litigation and litigation in india will go forever 10 years and 15 years so the entire purpose of the agreement uh, will collapse therefore they were afraid of to take an example i have uh, a person has another example a, a road contract a contractor and the entire due contract with government to construct a bridge or road for some reason or other he has not performed his part so if he goes to the goes to the court then he will take some years to complete then government will be deprived of doing that infrastructural projects so in so expecting him to perform court the government can engage some other contractor and perform the, uh, the work and the expenses or additional expenses or expense incurred cost amount whatever damage suffered by the government can be recovered from the uh, original contractor who committed default so that is the position of law so here the party at fault namely the person who has committed the fault has to compensate uh, the uh, Uh, the non defaulting party that is the purpose of this enactment so only this only for business friendly is only business earlier the view was equity equity based earlier section 20 so based on equity principles now this business friendly is a commercial in in nature in fact there are limitations are there also i will tell an example if you read section 20 sorry 20 class 2 which says that suppose i have committed uh, mr subhas has committed default take an example i have ordered him to sell 1000 bedsheets 1000 bedsheets manufactured at bhavani he has uh, not uh, supplied uh, the uh, bedsheets so bhavani is a uh, special place for uh, manufacturing bedsheets so that bedsheet i have purchased from some other person in the process i have incurred loss i am entitled to purchase the bedsheets required bedsheets from other person i have purchased so the loss i have caused i have suffered can be recovered from the uh, recovered from mr subhas including the cost and expenses but uh, suppose if we before if I, uh, going for substituted contract substituted contract means nothing but leaving this contract 
and going for another contract that is substituting another contract that is substituted contract so if suppose i have given up uh, this, uh, suppose that uh, before proceeding to uh, to enter into a substituted contract i have to issue notice under section 20 class 2 of the specific fact please kindly see in a super specific performance even if there was no notice it can't be dismissed earlier now the section 20 class 2 says that before entering into a substituted contract i have to issue 30 days notice to the party default non defaulting party saying that please see there was a contract between us you come and perform your part of the contract if not i am going to opt section 20 in such event you will be held liable for liable to pay cost and expenses so such a notice is mandatory under section 20 class 2 please uh, don't forget before uh, going for a substituted contract prior notice 30 days notice is mandatory under section wording is that uh, uh, notice shall be given in writing in 30 days before uh, not less than 30 days notice proviso is clearly says that um, uh, i am uh, the i am not entitled to get the expenses or uh, or cost incurred unless the sub con sub i have entered into a substituted contract i will take the very same example suppose if i have entered into an agreement with subhas subhas did not perform his part of the contract i have given notice to him even there after he did not perform i cannot straight away file a suit it is not permissible i uh, before if i want to recover the expenses incurred or the uh, cost amount incurred uh, then i have to necessarily go for a substituted contract unless i enter into an another uh, uh, contract with a third party to purchase the required budgets i cannot file a suit against subhas for the purpose of recovering the amount that is the section proviso to uh, section 22 then section 23 uh once i have opted for substituted performance i cannot maintain the suit for specific performance once i have opted to go to purchase the prop, uh, the required budgets from third party then i cannot maintain a suit for specific performance against mr subhas that is section uh, 20 class 3 20 class 4 uh, nothing in the section shall prevent the party who has suffered breach of contract claiming damage compensation so uh, we have com compensation cost amount expenses everything can be recovered so provided uh, there must be a notice with 30 days notice if not complied with i should go for substituted contract even after substituted contract then uh, when the uh, uh, then only i can recover the compensation cost and expenses otherwise not then 20a this is also new provision has been inserted 20a says no court shall grant an injunction in respect of infra uh, the infra um the infrastructure projects what is infrastructure projects uh, explanation is appended to section 20a six in there is an explanation that the explanation says uh, list of projects set out in the schedule if you read the uh, new act uh, at the end of the new act uh, there is a schedule special the number of schedules are there what are all the projects hospital uh, educational institutions uh, colleges uh, road uh, Uh, government buildings and hostels a uh, lot of uh, projects are mentioned there so the projects uh, list of projects list of infrastructure projects which are mentioned in the uh, schedule attached to section 20a is concerned no court shall grant an order of injunction so please see you please rewind what i what i have said earlier so the aim is to prevent the unnecessary uh, uh, litigations to prevent the Uh, project being taken off uh, that that is the main purpose and object of this uh, project so infrastructure project and no court shall grant injunction uh, to prevent the implementation under section 20 uh, capital a sub class 1 of the act then uh, 20 b special courts in respect of this infrastructure projects are concerned uh, government has to notify special courts special courts for the purpose of trying the suit 20c all the suits shall be tried and disposed of within a period of 12 months from the date of entering in uh, defendant's entered appearance but court can extend the period of time for another 6 months maximum 18 months not beyond that so you please see entire section 20 20a 20b 20c all the three cumulatively would show that 
the purpose of this enactment is to see that the litigation unnecessary litigation is avoided and the project is uh, project is implemented in a speedy manner and this is only with a view to invest the foreign investors for the purpose of commencing new uh, projects so this is what uh, section 20 uh, deals with and uh, section 21 deals with the power of power to award uh, compensation uh, except minor changes uh, no uh, no significant changes have been brought in section 22 we have already dealt with the court can grant relief for possession partition refund of advance amount even assuming it was not asked for court can grant yeah? possession also even not asked for court can grant partition even undivided property was purchased under the agreement uh, by enforcing agreement still, still relief of partition can be granted so these are all the issues uh, has been dealt with in respect of super specific performance now let us go to some uh, important aspect uh, before concluding i am going to conclude i want to add few uh, things about this amanda tax what are all the salient features of the amanda tax amanda tax came into force on uh, 18 2000 act came into force on 18 2018 it was given effect from 11 2018 notified from 11 2018 what are all the salient features i will read uh, i have already circulated uh, my notes as to the salient features uh, for uh, i'll just uh, rush through Uh, speedily to uh, uh, without wasting time earlier we have seen in a suit for specific performance damages is an is a matter of rule specific enforcement of specific performance is, a, is an exception that's what we have seen now after the amendment specific performance is a rule enforcement of specific performance is a rule and rather than an exception so completely position has been changed to discretion given to the court has been completely taken away now now the court has no discretion at all if the contract is genuine the agreement is genuine court has to proceed further court cannot have can't have any discretion to exercise then third one you see special treatment given to infrastructure projects section 20 capital a similarly uh, court can uh, access and uh, uh, get the assistance of an expert under section 45 uh, section 14 capital a and uh, you see special courts have been constituted to speed up the trial and uh, like fast track courts then 60c time bound disposal 12 months from the date of defendant entering appearance in addition court can extend only 6 months not beyond that and uh, actual not only the uh, cost and not only the compensation actual cost amount incurred expense incurred everything can be recovered from the defaulting party non defaulting party namely plaintiff is entitled to recover the compensation cost amount expenses from the uh, defaulting party then the, this act is only business oriented not no discretion and not uh, uh, equity based that is the main purpose earlier this is purely discretionary basis eh? now the discretion is completely wiped out only business friendly business oriented contract commercial con- uh, commercial in nature then readiness and willingness need not be pleaded it is that it has to be proved no doubt in it but there is no uh, there is no obligation to uh, plead we have seen batma kumari case i have said 2015 6cd cdc supreme court said uh, in the absence of any pleadings yes per 47 should has to be dismissed now that is no longer available because court itself has been amended then Uh, no injunction could be granted in respect of infrastructure facility infrastructure projects set out under section 20 class a then uh, so these are all the these are all the main aspects which we have to take note of and uh, mr kalai you please uh, uh, so paragraph 32 paragraph 32 whether the act is a prospective or retrospective that is the main aspect of uh, the, uh, the today's discussion because you would have seen number of suits have already been filed it is pending and what is the impact of it that we are going to discuss it you please see one, one after another paragraph 22 in, now in the screen available specific relief act 1963 is a procedural law is a procedural law so yes by supreme court because contract act is substantive law in order to enforce the contract act 
the specific procedure specific relief act has been introduced later in 1877 then um, present act 1963 so supreme court has clearly said it is a, it is a procedure law i am stressing this because there is a view that if it is a procedure law then uh, effect of amendment has to be given retrospectively even though the amendment would have been come to exist on 1/10 2018 still it is a procedure law therefore amendment has to be given retrospectively effect is the one view of the matter so that court has to decide because the act has come only very recently so only new born baby and the provision is yet to be tested at the hands of the court so let us wait what the courts are going to do going to do then amended act is not clear as to the applicability namely prospective or retrospective aka my opinion is it is only prospective in nature i have given all these things only on the base of my own presumption presumption i have my own views i have assessed the act it is only uh, yes it is only uh, prospective in nature so uh, act nowhere says that it is whether prospective or retrospective if it is pros- retrospective court should have specifically said that it is uh, retrospective in nature it has not said so then substitute performance breach of contract you see uh, earlier the only remedy available to the, uh, the uh, non defaulting parties to enforce the contract now the substitute performance so he can go for he can ignore the contract he can go for another contract he can recover the damages later so that is also uh, given so ignoring the earlier one party has been given new authority to proceed with the, uh, 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 the work that is why I, i i say it is only prospective in nature it can't be given retrospective in nature then there is no saving clause or trans- transitory provision in the act in the amended act i have not seen any provision which says that what uh, the anything done pursuant to the agreement which was entered into earlier or anything done under the pre amended act has, uh, has been saved uh, or, uh, or or some other transitory transitory provision has been incorporated in the act the act is completely silent there is no saving clause or no transitory provision therefore i would say that is only prospective in nature then above all section 6 of the general clause act is very very important provision which says that the anything done or any right accrued to a party before the act came into force cannot be taken away it is the very purport and the object of section 6 of the general clause act we have to take note of section 6 and 6 which says that a right accrued to a party cannot be taken away by your subsequent uh, enactment then you another i i have given one more example right to sue accrues only uh, only on the date of breach of contract so the new act is applicable ir- ir- applicable irrespective of the fact as to whether the sale agreement was executed prior to and subsequent to 18 2018 but as on the date as on as on the date of breach of trust according to me only the date on which the suit was filed which is the criteria to be taken note of so if suit was filed on and after 1 10 only to the suits filed which was on or after 1 10 this new act can be applied not to the suits which were filed prior to that suits which were pending or appeals were pending it can't be done then you see the differences given to the defendant were taken away i i, I already explained the three amended provision says that if the if the plain defendant is entitled to take all kinds of defense including that uh, the uh, options of readiness and willingness the uh, options of pleading in respect of readiness and willingness if, if suppose the act is given retrospective effect what what would happen suppose in a case where the plaintiff has not pleaded so defendant would have raised such defense if this act is given retrospective effect now the defense which was given available already to the defendant is now taken away therefore it is prospective then even assuming that the act 1960 is procedural in nature it cannot be applied retrospectively if doing so resulted in the imposition of new obligation and duties in respect of the past transaction so no amendment or no act uh, can be given retrospective effect unless the legislation in their wisdom thought it fit to give effect to do so if it is not so then they cannot do that then all the substantive defenses given to the defendants available you have seen you we can uh, we different can take uh, any plea and uh, even assuming that the defendant has failed to prove his defense uh, the uh, plaintiff is not entitled to get any relief because because of the personal bar there is a personal bar attached to it therefore it has to be uh, taken away now time bound disposal 
for filing suit time bound disposal has been given that is also advantage so these are all the these are while taking note of these things i say that uh, this is only uh, prospective in nature to lend support to my view i want to quote a leading decision of the supreme court it is not lead it's a constitutional bench judgment i want uh, instead of me saying something i want to read the exact words of the supreme court in the said judgment 2015 one scc page 1 constitutional bench judgment held that law passed today cannot apply to the events of the past if we do something we do it in view of the law of today and in force and not tomorrow's background uh, adjustment of it our belief in the nature of the law is founded on the bedrock of the bedrock that every human being is entitled to arrange his affairs by relying on the existing law and should not finds that his plans have been retrospectively upset the principle of law is known as lex prosequit non uh, respicit means law looks forward and not uh, back forward so this is the Uh, the, uh, the i i i i am uh, i am going to uh, i am going to reiterate my view if even in the event of any challenge made to the new act uh, i would say that the supreme court is going to follow the very same uh, point of law in fact it so happened in few other decisions also i have said a similar view was taken by the supreme court in 1995 2 scc 630 this is three judges bench of supreme court in respect of binami transaction case 1990 952 scc 630 rendered by three judges bench the earlier view of the supreme court 1989 was that binami transaction act can be given retrospective effect act came into force 1988 but it can be extended to the suits which were filed even before that supreme court matter was referred to three judges bench in 1999 2 scc 630 supreme court said that it can't be given retrospective effect it uh, on the other hand supreme court has coined a new word of retroactive retroactive which means uh, the argument would have been uh, would have been uh, executed much earlier but right accrues only on the date of filing of the suit therefore the suits and, and uh, defenses which were uh, taken on or after the act came into force uh, force uh, are hit by uh, the binami transaction act therefore the supreme court in the said judgment said that if any uh, the suits filed after the, the act came into force uh, are uh, governed by the new enactment similarly you take an example into success act section 6 uh, you know well that uh, whether the da daughters born the whether the, uh, the whether the uh, whether the act has been given prospective or retrospective effect came into consideration before the bombay pull bench ar 2014 bombay 15 151 154 151 the full bench judgment hindu success act section 3 section 6 was uh, the subject matter and challenge uh, ar 2012 bombay page number 101 division bench has taken the view that the act has to be given uh, as to cannot be given retrospective effect it, it it is applicable only to the daughters who born on on the after 99 2005 so matter was referred to three judges bench supreme court said whether doctor daughters born prior to or subsequent to it makes no difference uh, yes on the date of the enactment which came to force on 99 2005 if the doc, daughter is uh, if the daughter is uh, uh, alive the father is alive then act uh, is applicable and it cannot be given retrospective effect but provision 6 uh, itself says that notional partition theory has been retained and the, uh, the, uh, the daughters who born before that also given right, recognized as co partners so that came up before uh, the so division full bench full bench said bombay uh, full bench ar uh, uh, 2014 bombay 151 said it is retroactive and it cannot be given retros- retrospective effect similarly supreme court has also taken the similar view in 2016 to scc 36 pragas uh, case supreme court in section 66 and uh, section itself so supreme court has taken the view that this is only prospective effect so similarly i am sure that the court is going to take that it is only prospective view same view was reiterated in 2012 for scc 653 equal to 2012 2 ctc 449 2012 to ctc 449 then another judgment of leading judgment of supreme court 2016 5 ctc 674 2016 5 ctc 674 when you when when you read all these uh, four five judgment of supreme court you would uh, uh, appreciate 
that the act has has to be interpreted only prospectively not retrospectively added further i have quoted one more uh, principle of law legal maxim that principle embodied in is traceable from the maxim nova so and so potrukad paathukinga means that every new enactment every new enactment should affect the future and not the past times therefore my view of the matter is that the act 2018 Uh, dated 1 8 which came into force on 1 10 being substantive law operates retrospect prospectively operates prospectively uh, yes retrospectively is not clearly made out by its language is only a prospective in nature so therefore um, um, uh, therefore my view of the matter is that the act has to be interpreted only prospectively and the uh, agreement would have been executed much before but the, uh, the, uh, the new act will apply only to the suits uh, which were fi- which are filed on or after 1 8 but to my knowledge i uh, i spent some considerable time to find out whether any judgments have come uh, after the uh, because act of 2018 almost we are uh, we are going to uh, one, one year and six months were over i think it will take two more years for the high court to decide and thereafter matter has to be matter has to go to supreme court to finalize the issue but be that as it may be that as it may my view is that it is only prospective in nature with this i want to uh, conclude uh, thank you thank you very much uh, for giving me an opportunity uh, to mr mohan sir uh, thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you sir hello yeah sir really it is said to Two hours, forty uh, minutes, sir. You have taken a lecture. I think you would have spent more than two days for uh, collecting all these things. And of course, uh, uh, I have read this very uh, often book. And subsequently, Mr. Sambandham, Judge Retired Judge, the book. No, but uh, this is the first time that uh, you have collected almost all all citations, and you have given a beautiful narration. That's a very thing. Uh, no, uh, more than four hundred uh, advocates throughout Tamil Nadu are busy with this. எனக்கு <laughs> <laughs> இந்த எனக்கு பல பேர் போன் சொன்னாங்க நாங்க எல்லாம் வந்து ஒரு மனசு ஏற்பட்டு இருக்குங்க இந்த ஒரு ஒரு மாதத்துல ஏன்னா எங்களுக்கு ஒரு கோர்ட்டுக்கு போக முடியல அப்ப நான் பல விஷயம் என்ன செய்யணும் அப்படி சொன்னாங்க அப்பேற்பட்டவர்களுக்கு வந்து இந்த லீகல் நாலேஜ் ஒரு புட்பார்த் ஆட்டுக்கள் மாதிரி வந்து அமைஞ்சது அது நீங்க எனக்கு நான் வந்து நான் சொல்ல வேண்டிய விஷயம் வந்து உங்க கருத்து நீ பாருங்க தட் இஸ் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் தட் சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட்டா